the, with the FS stuff coming up, boys, I decided to try in some IRL machines. We have our trail mower that we're going to be using later on in the video. Obviously, this is a Coon brand compared to our New Holland in the video. We're going to look at some trailers. Irish brand here, Brahan, very heavy, 18 foot, well made. Obviously, in comparison, people might be more used to seeing something like a cane or a cramp trailer in FS. Here's our 16 foot classic we have. Nice 5712S on the front of her. Machine you definitely don't see in farm sim. Something that is good for a small farmer. Gets double use out of it. Lots of small farmers don't use them big wheel loaders we do in FS. For broken up silage like the JCB 435S. But you're looking at machine here that went out of production 1998. A Ford New Holland Moffat. Great machine for broken up silage. Good traction, good weight on the front. If you want to see some more videos lads in relation to sheep beef dairy we do have them in real life i can get onto them drop your comments down below see what you'd like to see in the future drop a like drop subscribe and we'll get some more videos out in the next week or so catch you in the next one all right lads welcome back to another video on the channel we're going to go into harvesting and cutting grass today so on today's episode we're going to look at how you harvest grass and cut grass depending on whether you're using a trail mower a trail harvester or a self-propelled mower and self-propelled harvester there's different ways obviously you mow fields whether you're using the different types if you're interested in seeing more videos guys do hit that subscribe button do hit a like if you do like the video and drop a comment for what you would like to see in future Right, so we're going to start and jump in to the John Deere 6 series here. Is a 6 or We had planned on using a Cavernlin mower, but when I started to use it, I had realized that there is no doors on the back for controlling the flow of grass. So we have switched over to a new Holland mower. We're going to jump in to field number 10 here on cams and map. And we'll get into the first round of the moon. Just getting our gates closed lads out of the way to make sure we don't drive into them on the first round. So obviously a trail mower is an offset mower where the tractor will drive in a, a different lane to the mower. So always when you're driving with a trail mower you will start and go left the main reason for this is the tractors on your inside or outside land closest to your hedge or your wall in real life we do this for a few reasons one of them being that the tractor can gauge how far you have to offset yourself from that field boundary because a tractor is approximately eight foot and you can allow yourself if you're using a 10 foot mower maybe a foot outside of that tractor so what you also use it for is seeing where there's bumps and hollows in the field or if there's any rocks falling off field boundaries from cattle during the winter or so on so if you have driven over rock you'll be able to get down and collect it or if you've driven over a bumpy patch you'll know from when you go around on that back sport to where to lift your mower to prevent the bed hitting the ground or picking up any stones so we'll drive around the first first uh, row here we'll drop our mower make sure our doors are set up control the flow of grass we'll turn on a mower and get going so is that creating controlling the flow of grass uh, I'd imagine the pickup should be wide enough to pick that up There we go. So toggle work mode allows you to open and close your doors. And off we go. See the way it's creating a nice narrow swath for the mower coming to pick it up. Most mowers would have a 10 volt pickup as well. On that back 
on the first round we normally leave lots of space in the boundary after all a few yards outside your boundary of missed grass it's always better than a broken up bed or broken moor for the sake of a few cubic meters of grass in your pit right so we'll do the first round and i'll explain why we do three rounds we do act well normally if you're more if you're more with a 10 foot mower you will do minimum of five rounds around the field that's including the outside lane so i tend to do six which leaves you more headroom for the, your trailed harvester turning at the headlands so we'll do five and then we'll get to the outside lane and i'll jump back and explain what is going on Just to tip lads as I'm running up to the corner here. As you come around the corner, you always want to leave that kind of swing room for your mower since it's on the lift arms. So if you put your tire on top of the grass you've just previously mowed, it should perfectly follow you around the corner. So watch it again as we come up to this corner. Uh, my wheels are either side of the grass, toward this left. So if my right tire so it drives directly on top, as we start to go around the corner. See the way I'm driving directly on top. And we swing back in. It should you should miss no grass on the corners for a trail for a trail more. Alright lads, as we can see here, as your corner gets very tight, you do need to drive out to the end and turn. Otherwise you will, like I've just done there anyway, miss grass. Because when you come to a narrow corner, the more rounds you do, the tighter that bend will become. And for a gyro head, more it's very hard not to miss grass. The way the, sh the, the turns become sharper every round you do. Alright lads, so we've come to the end of our rounds now, so we'll lift our mower. We've, we're going to do five because it, the turns are getting very sharp. You normally drive out to the end and then what we'll do is most farmers will drive to the middle. It depends on how long your headlands is. You don't want to be driving across your headlands the whole time. You want to try and keep approximately parallel to what you've already mowed not create too much short ground you'll create as many full length rows as possible so what we will normally do is we'd keep mowing up and down until we've all done and then we'll finish the last round but for the sake of this video we're just going to skip into the back also when we come out to the end we don't want our mower dragging into grass we've already cut so we'll always lift the mower before we cross that grass in real life. Okay. Alright, so what we, all, we do here is simply drive in the opposite way of the field. Drop it down. And we're on our way. We're at the tip here for the corner. You want to try and keep as close to the mow grass as possible. Because that trail mower we want to f keep... Keep in towards the tractor as you turn turn away.
So for today's videos, lads, since we get it's getting long, I will go through the mowing process for for today. So this will be part one, and we'll get into the harvesting the next day. So part two will be the harvesting part of this video. We'll jump into the big M and show the difference in between the two mowers. After we have finished this. As we can see here. That, that tractor width from the start is a good guide. Leaves a small bit of grass around the boundary that we don't really care. Care about. Keep that tractor in tight to remove grass. One benefit of having uh, a belt on the back of your 10 foot mower especially for these backgrounds is for trees it helps keep your equipment away from trees of any damage when you are lifting the grass so when we are lifting the grass on this background that is the advantage of having a belt it allows you to keep your grass out further away from any hazardous hazardous objects on the edge of your boundaries right so there's our rounds of the fields done and lift them more right there's our rounds done and how you operate a trail mower we will now get into the big m and show the difference between the two styles all right lads so we've jumped into our big m and we are going to get on our way down to the next field just for skipping on pointing this information, I will uh, fast forward this part of the video. Right, so we've skipped our journey to field 29 here in Camden because it's a it's a longer journey than I expected. No point throwing that and holding everyone up. Right, so for a big M, you can decide to go right or left when you come into a field. Because of the fact you don't have to turn around, you're not driving on any grass on any unmowed grass so just for the purpose of this video we'll drive right normally people prefer to drive to the left harvesters normally drive to a left when you come into the field but we'll drive to the right just for the sake of showing the difference between the two we want to check our work mode our work mode is set to y spreading so you want to make sure we change that so control y spot dropping yeah there we go so see the way both doors are closed that will spread the grass into the middle under the carriage you want to drop the thing with this big m is it'll drop the front mower and then it'll drop the back two at the same point so as we start off you see huge difference obviously with having a machine like this you do need a big machine to pick up the grass this big m is approximately 32 foot wide so you'd be looking at more than likely a self-propelled harvester to pick up the grass that a big m mows also a huge advantage in having a big m is it keeps that swath away from your hedge so as we see there, our right, our right mower on the big M is pulling that grass away from any field boundaries, any hazards that can take a mirror off, take a window off of a tractor. And also mowing this way, where you have lots of space between your rows, you will have the option of driving right with your harvester on the first round to allow for your trailer to be on your left and keep it away from that field boundary since this is such a big field we'll skip on through doing our we only do two rounds because two rounds is approximately over 60 foot wide Two rounds with this big M is much wider than the five rounds we've done with our 10 foot mower on the trails mower. So you'll have much more room with something like this machine as well at your headlands. 
obviously if you're using a machine like this you will probably be using bigger trailers bigger tractors and so on so we'll skip through lads until we come to the end of our rounds So we're coming to the end of our rounds here lads we have two rounds done that's plenty of room for machinery we'll be using so like the other machine we will raise our mowers and we will go approximately halfway across our headland some people like to split them into thirds half and half will it's probably not half and half in this map but a bit of an awkward shaped field we'll try and stay parallel to the head the uh lane on our left since that right side of the field is kind of an awkward shape so this is going to be the end of the video lads as i said do like subscribe all that good stuff comment what you'd like to see if anyone has any questions on in real life farming what we do in terms of anything in terms of site we're going to have some videos coming out on silage milk wool we do have sheep at home so all that good stuff this is going to be any video lads we're back again for part two we'll be going through how you harvest these fields you'll see these fields and what we have and how we have mowed it fully and um, we will go through the trailed harvester and we will go through the big x 11a in terms of collection and which way you go in the fields to avoid certain objects so this is gonna be the end of the video lads god bless we'll see you again